Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to open up with prayer, and after prayer, then we're going to go into the teaching. Today, we're teaching on justification. Uh, this ends the, the three-part series that we've been teaching on uh, for the last couple of weeks, dealing with grace, mercy, and justification. So we are going to end this series today with justification. We want to give honor where honor is due to our Heavenly Father for always giving us the opportunity to come and expound upon his precious word. We have to learn to take this word precious uh, because this, this word is not something to play with. It's not something to take lightly. It is something that we have to really take to heart. Uh, we want to give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for by paying the price, give us an opportunity to be justified through him. Uh, we want to give honor to the Holy Spirit for constantly leading and guiding us into our spiritual truth. Uh, we definitely want to give honor to also our Apostle D'Anthony Robinson, who will be watching it when uh, we put it on YouTube. Um, I'm sorry, on uh, Facebook. So he'll be watching it at that time. So let's go into prayer. And after we go into prayer, then we will go into the teaching. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to say, Lord, thank you for this precious word. Thank you for the opportunity to expound upon your precious word. Lord, we just pray, Lord, right now that you take control of this Bible study and help me teach this Bible study the way that you need it to go forth. Lord, I ask you right now to decrease me, Lord, so that you will get the glory. Because, Lord, nothing that I will say in this teaching will be of myself. Only what you give me to say. We thank you, Lord. We love you. We honor you. In your precious son, Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we still have a couple of more that's coming in. They should be coming in here shortly. Um, and if they don't, they'll get a chance to watch it on YouTube. But we've been talking all month about, uh, well, for the last two weeks, we've been talking about grace and mercy. Now, grace is when we go to God because we need a faith. In other words, we have messed up time and time again. Uh, for some of us, we come in the midst of our mess. And we say, God, I need a faith. Because those of us who typically are in mess, we know the outcome. We know we in mess. We accept we in mess. And we know the outcome of being in that mess. And... So we go to God and we say, God, I need a favor. Now, we may not word it exactly like that, but that's a, that's what we're talking about. God, I need a favor. So when you're dealing with grace, you're dealing with a favor that you are seeking from God. Now, in order to get that favor, it could only come through his son, Jesus Christ. Had to be a perfect blood sacrifice in order for you to be able to get that favor from God. So in other words, you couldn't go to mama and daddy. You couldn't go to, to Ray Ray. You couldn't go to Sally Jane. You couldn't go, not, none of them had the ability to give you that favor. You know how it is when, when, when it's something that we really in need of and we'll go to that friend, we go to that family member and we like, look, I need a favor. This is a big one. I need a favor. But that's the same way we came to God. God, this is a big one, and I need a faith. And God knew that what the only way for you to be able to receive this favor is through his mercy. And that could only come through the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Now, mercy is dealing with the benefits the benefits of grace. That's why they always use the acronym uh, grace, which is 
which they always say God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace. Uh, because in order for you to receive the benefit uh, under the, the penalty of the law, it had to be a sacrifice. In other words, um, under the penalty of the law, if you're found guilty, the penalty of it is death. And God knew if you paid the price yourself, where you was going. So God had to send a perfect sacrifice. And that moves us from the favor to the benefit, which is mercy. And that's what we talked about last week, which was mercy. Um, now, because of mercy, now we're, we're in the benefit part where we're saying, God, I know I'm guilty. But I'm I'm truly sorry for what I've done, and so I'm 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 throwing myself humbly before you, and that's where you get uh in the court of the law when they they say uh to the judge I throw myself before the mercy of the court, in other words uh what whatever you decide to do I deserve it. Whatever you decide to do, I deserve it. But I'm asking you to have leniency on me because I I realize I messed up. Um, I realize the 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 consequence of what I done. I realize it. Um, they they typically in the court of the law they typically look at you to see if you have any type of remorse. For what you've done. So when you are under mercy, you are under the remorse part of grace. So grace actually, grace is actually shown in three parts. You got the favor. You got the, uh, because of your remorse, the benefit. And what we're going into today, which is justification. So I'm saying that to you so that you can understand when you are falling into grace, it's three parts that you're dealing with. And each part is an elevation from the other part or because of the other part. So in other words, in order to receive uh, mercy, you had to fall under grace. Mercy don't stand on its own by itself. In other words, God is not going to give you the benefit if you're not, uh, if you haven't come to him, letting him know, I'm guilty, I know I'm guilty, uh, but I'm, I'm coming to the mercy of you. So grace and mercy works hand in hand with one another. Um, both comes from God. Both comes from God through his son, Jesus Christ. But grace and mercy works hand in hand. Now, you came to God and you said, God, I need a favor. I messed up again, God. And some of us, this is a, a daily process. Um, you know, so people say, okay, well, how many times can you come to God and tell him you're sorry. You can come to him until you take your last breath. If you're truly sorry. If you think about the uh, the thieves that was up on the cross. Um, one, one that was guilty. He he knew he was guilty. And But what he was still trying to do. He was still trying to reap the benefit from Jesus Christ. Like, hey, if you be the son of God, get yourself and us down from here. And the other one fell under mercy. He transitioned from grace into mercy. And he said, he said, remember me when you come into paradise. So in other words, he was letting Jesus Christ know, 
I, I deserve this. What is about to happen to me, I deserve it. But I am sorry for it. But I also acknowledge who you are. So see, when you are under mercy, you are acknowledging who Jesus Christ is. You are acknowledging that you cannot do this alone. That you require Jesus Christ. Um, so because of that, and I want you to keep the two thieves in mind. So because of the one that said, remember me when you come into your paradise. You don't deserve to be up here. We do, but you don't. You know, when because of that, he was godly sorrow. He was godly sorry for what he done. And that transitioned him from mercy to where we are today, which is justification. So again, grace is a three-part transition. Grace starts from you in need of a favor from God. And in order for you to, to receive that favor, there had to be a sacrifice once and for all. And that sacrifice was Jesus Christ up on the cross once and for all. Then there does not need to be another sacrifice. There's not no rituals that you need to do. And because of that sacrifice, those who are guilty transition into what is called mercy. So when you're in mercy, you're letting God know I'm guilty. I know I'm guilty. I deserve whatever you do to me, but I'm asking you to have mercy on me because I'm truly sorry for what I've done. And I'm asking you to have mercy on me. And because of that, then you transition into the third part, which is justification. Now, justification is a concept in Christian theology that refers to the act of God declaring a sinner to be righteous. So before justification, the sinner was unrighteous. After the justification, the sinner became righteous also known as acquitted it of guilt. So in other words, when uh, looking at it from a court of, of law, when the judge says you have be, been found not guilty, that means you have been justified from that act, that's, that uh, crime, or that in, in the spiritual sense, that's, that's sin. You have been found not guilty guilty so in order for you to be found not guilty someone had to be found guilty let me say that one more time in order for you to be found not guilty someone had to be found guilty and we call that imputed sin and that was what happened to jesus christ our sins was imputed on him. In other words, he didn't deserve it. He didn't do anything to receive it, but there had to be a sacrifice. So our sins was imputed on him and he paid the ultimate price with his physical life. He paid the ultimate price with his physical life just for the purpose of God letting us know that we are now justified. Now, it is not based on any merit or works of the individual, but is solely through faith in Jesus Christ and his atoning sacrifice on the cross. So it is nothing that we can do. It has nothing to do with how much work we do, it has nothing to do with how rich we are. It has nothing to do with how popular we are. It has nothing to do with our connections that we may have. Nothing. It can only come through faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's look at Romans chapter 3, verse 23 through verse 24. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 through 24. 
and I am reading from the King James Version. I'm giving you a moment to get to find it. Okay, Romans chapter 3, verse 23 through 24. And it reads, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So this verse starts off by saying all have sinned. All. So it's not it's not a race thing, it's not a gender thing, it's not a a uh social economics thing. It is all have sin. Every one of us who have breath in our body have sin and come short of the glory of God. Then say the glory of man. Then say the glory of you. But we all have sin and come short of the glory of God. Then it goes on to say, being justified freely by his grace, being justified. So in other words, to be declared not guilty. And this is how we're declared not guilty, by his grace. We are declared not guilty by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So Jesus bought us or redeemed us back to the Father through him going to the cross. Now, this passage in the book of Romans emphasizes that all humanity has sinned and fallen short of God's standard of perfection. However, Justification is freely given by God's grace. And this can only come through the redemption of Jesus Christ. Now, just as a disclaimer, I am telling this to you from a uh, from the, the lifestyle of Christianity. No other religious sector from the lifestyle of Christianity. Now, Last week, we was talking about Brother Abraham, who was dealing with in need of mercy from God. Now, because of Abraham's faith, the concept of justification by faith was primarily illustrated in the life of Abraham. In Genesis 15 and 6, it is stated that Abraham believed in the Lord and it was credited or counted unto him righteousness he believed in the lord and it was counted unto him righteousness i want you guys to really understand when people try to tell you you got to send so much money to them or you got to do these hundreds of steps or you got you got to reach out to them because they've heard from the lord and and uh and because of that you have to reach out to them and do certain things and they will help you to be found not guilty. Now, they don't use the word not guilty, but this is basically what they're saying. So you're telling me, now, the, the Bible tells me that it comes through Jesus Christ. Through his blood sacrifice that was done on the cross. So now you're telling me that is no longer his sacrifice is no longer enough that now i have to depend on what you what you say the lord have said and in order to get it there's certain things that i have to do which typically comes around with financial things so what Jesus did on the cross wasn't enough. Is that what you're saying? Because if 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 people try to use any other means for you to receive justification, that's not of God. 
that's not of God. If you got, if if people tell you you got to pay a set amount of money in order to receive this justification, that is not of God, because it is a gift that is freely given through the redemption of Jesus Christ that comes through our faith. It's the same way Abraham received it in Genesis 15 and 6. He received it because he believed in the Lord and it was counted unto him righteousness. There was nobody that held his justification in their hands. There was nobody who could go and, and do any type of ritual for him to receive his justification. It was all because he believed. So let's look at King David. Now, King David, despite his failures and sins, and there was quite a bit of them, uh, often speaks of being justified or declared righteous by God in the book of Psalms. Now, in Psalms 31, 1 and 2, Psalms 31, 1 and 2, David celebrate the blessing of being forgiven and having his sins covered by God. So again, there was no person, there was no man, there was only God through his son, Jesus Christ. And the reason that I keep harboring on this is because of the fact if in Romans 3, 23 and 24, if he says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, then how in the world am I in a position to bring you justification if all have sinned? That means I'm just as messed up as you are. So how in the world can I bring you justification? I cannot. I cannot bring you justification. The only thing that I could possibly do, because I have received justification, I can lead you to the person that can bring you justification, and that's Jesus Christ. And if, if someone tells you anything other than that, they're a liar. We do not have the ability to bring you justification because we're just as guilty of sin as you are. So we do not have the ability to bring you justification. The only thing we have is the authority. Now, it's a difference between ability and authority. We have the authority to bring you to Jesus Christ, who can bring you justification but we cannot do it in ourselves. Okay, now Jesus, we talked about Jesus last week. In Jesus' teaching, Jesus emphasizes the importance of faith uh, that was done in his teachings. He frequently interacts with individuals who demonstrate faith, affirming they're righteous before God. In Luke chapter 18, Verse 9 through 14, Luke 18, 9 through 14, Jesus tells the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, illustrating that one who humbly seeks God's mercy is justified. So in other words, the Pharisee was like, I did this, I did that, I did all these wonderful things. I go to church every Sunday. I wear my best suit in church. I wear my biggest hat in church. I have on my best heels in church. I sing the loudest. I shout the loudest. I talk the loudest. I work the earth door. I, I do the devotion. I preach. I, I teach Sunday school. I teach Bible study. I sit in the congregation. I do all these things. So therefore, I should be free. And the tax collector said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's it. It ain't no hundred steps you got to do. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. I'm guilty. 
Now notice where he said, he said, have mercy on me, a sinner. Meaning, let me live in your in the benefits of your death. Let me live in the benefits of your death, burial, and resurrection. A sinner. And because of that, he was found to be more justified than the Pharisee. Okay, now in Paul's letters, the Apostle Paul expounds on the doctrine of justification. In Romans 3, 21 through 26, Paul explains that righteousness comes through faith in Jesus Christ. For all, now hear this, for all who believe. So all of these steps that you got to do in order to receive justification is not biblical. The Apostle Paul tells us that righteousness comes through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. So you simply got to believe. And because you believe, your desire changes. Now, does that mean you're going to live a perfect life? No. You might you might desire a change today and then tomorrow go right back to doing the same thing you was doing. But for today, you are justified. And then tomorrow, you have to do the process again to be justified. So it's not a one-time deal. You can receive this over and over and over. Now, this was highlighting that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is Jesus Christ. Through the redemption that is Jesus Christ. So in other words, he's saying, I know you're guilty. You've thrown yourself uh, before me and acknowledge that you're guilty and you're asking me to, to allow you to have benefits through your son, Jesus Christ, who is now my Messiah, because I, I am saying that this is the only mm -hmm. way my faith is telling me that this is the only way that I can receive justification. Is by accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and acknowledging that I'm a sin, I'm a sinner. So when you hear people talk about all of the hundred things that they do in in church or, or for the church, when they go talking about all these hundred things that they, they are doing, it does not, it does not justify them. Faith without works is dead. So just your works that you're doing does not justify you. Your works and your faith has to come into an agreement. Because I believe that I'm justified through Jesus Christ, I want to do these works. See, people think that they have to do these works. You don't have to do anything. It's called free will. You don't have to do anything. There's a, there's a saying that they used to say for us, us black people, you ain't got to do nothing but but die and stay black. <laughs> that's, that's a little saying that they used to always say. But you, because of free will, you do not have to do anything. But because you appreciate what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you, because you got to make this personal. Because of what he did on the cross for you, I want to do this. I want to do this because of what he did on the cross for me. And that's the way we have to look at it. And we have to, we have to stop. Uh, we have to stop trying to do it within ourselves. So let's go a little bit further. Now, let's look at Brother James. 
in the epistle of James, while emphasizing the importance of faith, James also stresses the importance of works as evidence of genuine faith. Now, I just got through talking about faith without works is dead. So in, in James 2, 14 through 26, he argues that faith without works is dead, illustrating that true faith produces good works. That's just what I just got through saying. Because you have been found justified from your action of sin, there's, there's works that you want to do. And that's your way of showing God how much you appreciate him letting you off the hook. Let's just use today's terminology. You appreciate God letting you off the hook. Now, let me let me bring you back up to course one more time. When you was in the midst of your sin, you realize where you were going. And if there's anybody that say that they can commit sin and they didn't know where they was going, they didn't even know that they was committing sin, they're lying. There's that little inkling in you called the Holy Spirit that's going to let you know what you're doing is wrong. People usually say, something told me that I shouldn't do this. That's the Holy Spirit that's telling you that this is wrong. So in the midst of your mess, in the midst of sin, you went to God and you said, God, I need a favor from you. I messed up. I need a favor. This is the big one, God. Because you know, every time we mess up, that's always the big one to us. Now, this is the big one, God. I need a faith. And God, who knows everything, already know what, you, what you've done, but he still wants you to admit what you've done. So you go to God and say, I need a favor. I deserve under the under what what the law says. I deserve whatever you decide to do to me. I deserve it. But God, I need the benefits of Jesus Christ. So I'm coming before you at the mercy of your high throne, asking you to forgive me. And when you ask God to forgive you, when you acknowledge to God that you are a sinner, then you transition into what is called justification, which is what we're talking about tonight. Okay. Now, James was illustrating that true faith produced good, good works as a natural outworking of one's relationship with God. Uh, throughout the Bible, Throughout the Bible, justification is portrayed as a central theme of God's redemptive plan. It underscores the importance of faith in God's provision for salvation and emphasizes that righteousness comes not from our own efforts or our own merits. It is nothing you can say, nothing you can do that can justify you, only the blood of the lamb which is jesus christ and because you believe in it because you believe that i can only be justified through the blood of the lamb who is jesus christ because you believe in it you are counted righteousness so all of this other stuff where you you got to pay me 59.99 in order to get this water and you drink this water for seven days straight and now you're going to be uh, uh, justified is not biblical. It is not biblical. The history of justification in the Bible reveals God's consistent message of salvation by faith ultimately fulfilled in the, per the personal work of Jesus Christ. So, Let's let's kind of answer some questions that I, I put in here. First question, what is justification according to Christian belief? What is justification according to Christian belief? 
And we talked about that at the beginning of the teaching. Justification is when you are declared not guilty, even though God knows you're guilty. But because of your sin that was imputed on Jesus Christ, you was found not guilty or in, in, in the terms of the courtroom, acquitted it. You was acquitted. And this could only happen because of his sacrifice on the cross. It's the only way you can receive that. According to Christian belief, justification is the act of God declaring a sinner to be righteous or acquitted. It is a central concept in Christian theology, emphasizing that through faith in Jesus Christ, his atoning sacrifice on the cross, believers are made right with God. So let's see what justification involves. We know how to receive justification. We know that grace is a three-part transition or a three-part elevation. You can look at it in this sense. It's a three-part elevation. You go from, God, I need a favor, to, God, thank you for, the, for me in the benefit through Jesus Christ, to, God, thank you for forgiving me and finding me or declaring me not guilty through Jesus Christ. Now, the key person in each elevation is Jesus Christ. And that is the only way that you can receive justification. You can only go from grace to justification through Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at what justification involves. Justification involves a legal declaration. God, who is the ultimate judge, declares believers righteous and acquitted it of their sins. This declaration is not based on the individual's own righteousness. So in other words, it ain't nothing that I, I said. It ain't who I'm connected to. It ain't how much money I got. It ain't what race I am. None of that. Nothing that I've done, no matter how many positions in the church that I can do. My, that is not going to declare me righteous. It is only through Jesus Christ who imputed my sin upon him. And because of that, I believe that only through him can I be found not guilty. Let's say that one more time for those in the back. My sins can only be declared not guilty because it was imputed upon him. My sin was personally imputed upon him and only through his death, burial, and resurrection can I be found not guilty. Now, notice I said death, burial, and resurrection. If you stop at death because of his death, then you're not going to be found not guilty. Jesus had to have victory over death. He had to rise over death. He had to rise in his divine nature. So now let me let me go with this part here. This is going to help you a lot. Now, we know if we die in sin, where we go? Those who die in sin, uh, they go to hell. But let's just let's just do the reality of it. You die in sin, you go to hell. Now, in the Bible, it tells us that Jesus died, went to hell, preached a revival, took the keys back from hell. So in other words, he paid the price he paid by going to hell. That was the penalty. So when he went in that grave, he when he died, he died in our sin. Let's, let's just make sure we understand that. When he died, he died in our sins. When he was buried, he went to pay the price for our sins. When he went to hell, while he was in hell, he took back the keys. He took back the keys. And because of that, he rose and ascended to heaven 
to be on the right hand side of the Father. So in other words, every time you commit sin, and this is something you need to take to heart, when you commit sin and you are godly sorry for what you've done, you are you are acknowledging Jesus, I know you paid the price for my sin. And I know that you have victory over my sin. And I know that the only way that I can be found forgiven of this is through you. And I believe that. And when you when you acknowledge that and you believe that, you are counted righteousness. Okay. So the first one is legal declaration. The second one is grace through faith. Justification is a gift of God's grace. Justification is a gift of God's grace. That's going back to that acronym that we use, God's riches at Christ's expense, grace. We receive the benefit, the gift of God, but it's only through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is not earned through good deeds or adherence to religious law, but it is freely given to all who trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now notice I said Lord and Savior because he's Lord of Lord, King of Kings. So when you, when you acknowledge that he is your Lord, you are saying, God, uh, Jesus, I acknowledge that you are above me. I am underneath you. You are my Lord. Then it goes on to say, Lord and Savior. So see, we need to know when we use these little, these little uh, sayings, we need to know exactly what we are actually saying. So he's my Lord, meaning he's over me. He owns me. He controls me. But I'm freely letting him do that. Then it goes on to say he's my Lord and my Savior. Lord and Savior. Not just Lord, not just Savior. People get, people get hung up on those words. He's my Lord and my Savior. So my Savior means that he paid the ultimate price for me. He saved me. That's what Savior means. He saved me. He's over me because he saved me. He can control me because he saved me. He owns me because he saved me. Nobody else. As I said in the beginning, mama couldn't do it. Daddy couldn't do it. Ray Ray couldn't do it. Sally Sue couldn't do it. Bebe couldn't do it. Nobody but Jesus Christ. Number three, reconciliation with God. So through justification, believers are reconciled to God. Their relationship with him is restored. So in other words, we had a relationship with God. At the moment that he breathed the breath of life into us, we had a relationship with him. We were separated from him because of sin. And Jesus restored us back to him through justification. Grace, mercy, and justification. So we're no longer separated from God. Number four, uh, righteousness. Justification or positional righteousness. Justification grants believer a new standing before God. They are seen as righteous in his sight, not because of their own righteousness, but because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So in other words, if you think it's something that you did to get to get you where you at with God, you're wrong. It's nothing that you've done. It's not, we, we are all like filthy rags to God. Because of sin. But when he looks down from heaven at Diane, Jesus steps in front of me, and all he can see is my righteousness. 
through Jesus Christ. There's no other way that he can see it on me. Because without Jesus Christ, I'm a filthy rag. And I'm saying it in this manner so that we can appreciate the grace, mercy, and justification that we have. See, it's something about when you know that somebody helped you out of a jam, it, it causes you to look at them in a better light. So, okay, so let's let's move on a little bit further. Okay, now let's let's look at, and I know I said justification is the last of the series, and it, it is, but it's another word along with justification that I want to talk about. Now we know that with grace we are that we're receiving a favor from God because ain't nothing we can do in ourselves to be justified. So we know when we are under grace, we receive a favor from God. And the benefit of that favor, which is Jesus Christ, is that I'm now found not guilty. Now, justification and sanctification are two distinctly but closely related concepts in Christian theology. So let's look at, uh, again, we know justification is when God declares us not guilty. And he can only declare us not guilty. He can only forgive us through his son, Jesus Christ. It is not something that we can earn. It is not based on works that we do. It's not based on how good we can talk. It's not based on uh, who we connected to, how much money we got. It is only through our faith alone in Jesus Christ. Now, the legal aspect of justification is often likened to a legal declaration of God. Uh, as the ultimate judge declares uh, a person pardoned, God declares us pardoned of our sins. A judge will declare us pardoned of our crime. Same thing, same thing, but the only difference is if I'm found guilty of a crime, I, I can go pay the price for that crime. And then I can be no longer guilty of that crime. But if I'm found guilty of sin, there's an eternal punishment for that. I'm the, this is not telling anybody to go out there and commit any type of sin, do anything wrong. What this is saying is I can come back from a, a legal, a, a law of the land battle. I can't come back from an eternal battle. Okay, so I'm going to make sure people understand that. So that's justification. Sanctification is the ongoing process of being made holy and set apart for God's purpose. So now here's you about to put action. I'm going to use the word action. You're about to put action to that forgiveness that you have. So sanctification is a result or it is a um you no longer you no longer want to be on the team team Satan anymore. You want you want to be away from him. Because while you was on team Satan, you got in all sorts of trouble. And uh when when you was in trouble, uh he didn't come to help you out. And it's typically like that. When someone is hanging out with a bad crowd of people and, and they get in trouble, that crowd is gone. Now you left to deal with it alone. And that's what happened. You was on, you was on the, the team of the world and when you got in trouble, they was gone. And so you needed a way to come out of that situation. And when Jesus Christ came to your rescue and he brought you out of that situation, you say, okay, I don't want to be on team Satan anymore or team world. I don't want to be on there anymore. So now I got to be set apart from them 
So now there's things that I need to do to be set apart from them. I got to now be made holy through sanctification. So here's the cleansing process. The first part is I got to be forgiven. So you receive that with justification. You receive that forgiveness. Uh, also with with uh, justification, you receive forgiveness and you receive that you're no longer found guilty. You're pardoned from that mistake you made. So that happened because of justification. Now, if you go back to 1 John 1 and 9, he says, um, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So now we're in the cleansing process. So after you have been found not guilty, after you have been found forgiven, that's based on 1 John 1 and 9, now we go into the cleansing process of it. And that is what is called sanctification. So sanctification sets you aside from uh, the world. So in other words, when every time God looks down and do a spiritual x-ray of Diane, Jesus Christ steps in front. You know, when you go and get an x-ray at, at, at a doctor's office, they put this um, this this vest on you um, for for two reasons. First reason is so that they can get a better view of your inside. Second reason is so that uh, it's a safety precaution, so that you don't get a lot of the uh, uh, the things that comes from having a X-ray. Oh, I can't think of it right now. My mind gone, but. Um, Anyway, so so that that vest acts as a two part uh, to keep you from getting radiation. There it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So that vest keeps you from getting a lot of the radiation uh, on you, but it also helps them to get a better view of your in inside. So when you, so when God looks down and do a spiritual X ray of Diane. Jesus Christ acts as that vest in front of me so that all, all God can see is the inside of me. He don't see anything outward. He only sees the inside of me because Jesus stands in front of me who is righteous and I am made righteous through him. Now, so sanctification, we're going through the cleansing process Sanctification sets you aside for the purpose of you growing and becoming a better person because of what Jesus done for you. So that's the whole purpose of sanctification. Now you're in the growing process so that you can be a better representation of Jesus for what he did for you on the cross. Now, where a lot of people what happens with, with a lot of people, they get stagnated right there. Okay? I'm, I'm found justified. I'm no longer guilty because I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I'm under grace now, so I'm good. I'm Gucci, as they say. So then they don't, they don't allow themselves to elevate in the cleansing process. See, not only are you under grace not only are you under the benefit of grace which is mercy not only are you forgiven and found not guilty which is justification you now you got to be cleansed you got to be clean from all of that filth from when you was in the world and that's sanctification and that's a process that you are to go through now Let's look at the process. Unlike justification, which is a one-time event, sanctification is a progressive work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. Now, let me explain that one-time event. Okay, I got 10 minutes here, so let me, let me get going. Okay, so let me explain that one-time event. That one-time event is at the moment of salvation, you was justified of every sin you would commit. 
at the moment of salvation. But there's a sanctification that you have to do in order to operate in that justification. So justification is a one-time process. You don't have to be justified anymore. At the moment of sal salvation, you were justified. But you do have to go through that cleansing process time and time again because of that nasty little thing called sin nature that we have. Okay. Because of this, you want to cooperate with Jesus Christ. You want to be found a good representation of Jesus Christ. Now, why? Next question. Why is faith emphasized in justification? Why is faith emphasized in justification? So why is just why is faith a part of justification? That's what that question is meaning. Faith is emphasized in justification because it is through faith in Jesus Christ that we receive the righteousness that comes from God. It is not based on our own works or merits. It is based on a gift that is uh, given to us based on the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It is a gift that is given to us because of the finished work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. So, again, to recap here as we get ready to close, uh, I never get through all my information here, but, <laughs> but I got through the, the, the most part that you guys need. Um, oh, one more question. I'm, I'm going to hit this question, and then we're going to go into the recap. What role does grace play? play in justification what role does grace play in justification grace is the central part of justification it is by god's grace that we are justified freely so in other words we don't receive justification no other way other than grace we don't receive justification under the law we receive justification only under grace we do not deserve or earn justification, but it is given to us as a gift of God's unmerited favor. And going back to where I said uh, that grace is God's favor that we ask for. And because of that favor, we get to operate in the benefits of that favor through his son, Jesus Christ. And because we believe in his son, Jesus Christ, we receive the, the forgiveness of that, which is justification. And because of justification, every time God looks down at us, he only sees the good in us. Because Jesus Christ is standing in front of us, advocating for us every time. And that is the benefit of grace mercy and justification but after you receive justification this is something i want you to take home with you after you receive justification you need to go through a cleansing process <clears throat> one of the things the holy spirit showed me is we we go through a healing process which is called salvation and we receive that healing process but Many times, because a lot of ministries are not teaching this, we don't go through the deliverance part. We go through the healing part with the salvation. But because we don't go through the deliverance part, meaning that we are asking God to take that desire from me. If you are a excessive drinker, ask God to take that desire from you. If you are a, a excessive uh, adulterer, Ask God to take that desire for you. Because it's not the act that God judged you on. It is your intent to commit the act that you get judged on. So as you are receiving your healing, you need to ask God to take that desire from you to continue doing that same thing that you was doing that separated you from God because you now have an advocate that is constantly telling God that he paid the price for everything that you're going through. 
but we don't want to make Jesus Christ death, bury, and resurrection be in vain because we sit here represent him any old kind of way. We want him to know how much we appreciate what he has done for us. And that comes from justification and sanctification. So all four things plays a major part in our lives. I got to get a favor from God. I got to go under the, the benefit because I've, I've put myself before God and I'm at his mercy that whatever he do, I deserve it. But please, God, just be lenient on me because I can't go up on that cross. I can't have them to put them nails in, in me. I can't deal with that, God. So please be lenient on me. I'm falling at the mercy of you, God. And because of that, Jesus Christ steps in and said, you know, I paid the price for that. You can't, you can't hold Diane accountable because I paid the price for that. And because of that, I fall under justification. And because I fell under justification, I don't want to do that anymore. So I need to be cleansed. I need to be delivered. And that comes from sanctification. So all four of them plays a major role in the growth of your spiritual life. Uh, so I hope this has been a blessing to you guys. I hope that what was said helped you to understand the importance of grace, mercy, justification, and I topped it off with sanctification. So I hope you understand the importance of that. Um, if, if what has been said today has caused you to want to make a, a change in your life, you want to be justified and sanctified from the way that you used to be, reach out to us at Change Life Outreach Ministries at gmail.com and we'll walk you through the steps of salvation. Uh, if you just need to rededicate your life, same thing. Reach out to us and we will walk you through the steps of rededication. Uh, if you need prayer, reach out to us at Change Life Outreach Ministries at gmail.com and we will be happy to pray with you. If you are in need of, uh, I mean, if you would like to donate to our ministry to help us continue doing what we're doing, you can cash app us at dollar sign C-L-V-E-M, dollar sign C-L-V-E-M. I want to thank those of you who are in our um, chat here. Uh, I hope what was said is a blessing to you guys. Uh, for time's sake, if you would, just uh, message me if you have any questions or comments. Message me, text me, email me, one or the other. Uh, if you have any questions or comments. But we are going to close out at this time. So let's pray out. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for everything that you have said and done on today. We thank you for how you have blessed us on today, Lord, and how you have topped it off with sanctification. So, Lord, we ask you right now to continue to strengthen our minds, our hearts, Continue to strengthen our, our eyes, our spiritual eyes. Let us see what you need us to see. Let us hear what you need us to hear. Let us feel what you need us to feel. And Lord, as we go into our healing and deliverance, continue to build us up, continue to give us knowledge and understanding so that we can use godly wisdom in all that we do. Lord, we love you. We, we, we give our all to you. We thank you for your precious son, Jesus Christ, going to the cross on our behalf. And we thank you, Lord, for not leaving us comfortless, but leaving us with the Holy Spirit. So we say, God, thank you for everything that you have done in our life. And until we can expound upon your word again, we say amen and amen. All right. God bless you, everyone. And um, be sure to share this with others. And uh, thank you again, and I'll see you the next time. All right, good night.